bachelor's from Penn State University and his master's from Villanova. Seems like a trend we got here today. Um, he's a professional engineer in Pennsylvania and in Maryland. Um, he provides services for municipal civil engineering, planning, subdivision, land development, design, stormwater management, construction, and land surveying projects. Welcome, Tom. Thank you. Somebody told me you guys were all here to see me today, so I really appreciate it. Um, why I'm here is, uh, I was asked by one of the district engineers uh, to kind of give a presentation on the rational method, uh, particularly uh, when being used with detention basin designs and about the issue of combining hydrographs using the rational method. Uh, that would take all of five minutes and they gave me an hour, so uh, I'm going to go through a little bit more in depth about the rational method. I'm going to talk, uh, well, I'll go through the slides. One thing I would ask you to do, if you would please turn to page 34. I found something last night when I went through. Uh, it's on page 12, slide 34. <clears throat> Item number one says compute hydrographs for inflow hydrographs into the basin. Just add after the first four, for the longer TC storm. It kind of makes a difference. In other words, we're going to go through that. But you're going to actually do two analyses for a basin when you're dealing with this situation. So today we're going to cover uh, an explanation of the rational formula, kind of a little bit of a history about it. We're going to talk about rational hydrographs, because that's what you need for detention basin and uh, BMT design. You just don't need a peak flow, you need a hydrograph. We're going to talk about using rational hydrographs in the Virginia Tech Penn State Urban Hydrology model, or VT Pusham for short. And um, I also would like, I'm going to drop a, a clipboard here. We are planning to run the seminar uh, this summer in August. I think it's the August 7th through 9th at Penn State Great Valley, so it's close by. Hopefully from the room full of you folks, there would be 20 to 25 people that would sign up um, for that seminar. Um, we work, basically work projects through uh, using the software over a three-day period. When you're done, you get to take home the software and use it as many times or with as many um, computers as you like at your own company. We're also going to talk about rational hydrographs for detention basins and infiltration design, incorporating infiltration design in there. And then I'm going to <clears throat> compare the rational hydrograph method with NRCS hydrographs. Now, after the first couple presentations today, and based on the writing on the wall, you may want to just throw your notes out because it seems like uh, the trend has recently become that uh, municipalities, uh, ordinances, and things are basically going only to the SCS method uh, and the 24-hour duration storm. I'm going to give you a comparison about the various methods, why I think they may be a little more uh, appropriate on smaller methods. We have been ex successful in getting NPDES permitting through with the combination of SCS and rational methods. And um, I've got over 40 years experience designing detention basins, starting with a slide rule and a hand calculator. So uh, I've seen quite a few of them being built and, and installed and uh, functioning. So let's start off with the rational formula. And it actually started <coughs> by a French attorney back in 1674. Uh, but it was attributed to an Emil Kuchling, 
uh, who used the method for designing sewers, I'm assuming they were combination or storm sewers in Rochester, New York. In the British Isles, it was concluded that there was some relationship to the ratio of runoff to rainfall. Uh, and it might be approximated by a coefficient, generally in the range of 0 0.4 to 0 0.6 for natural catchments. So the first principle relating rainfall or runoff to rainfall with the coefficient is one of the principles uh, that is uh, known for why they um, named it the rational method. And in 1851, Mulvaney presented the second principle, which he found a relationship between the term time of concentration to the storm event. And if you come away with nothing more today than an understanding of the difference between a time of concentration and the rainfall duration, you're doing pretty good. That's key to this whole thing. Okay, so in imperial units, Q equals CIA, I won't go into what the uh, subscripts are, but C is the runoff coefficient, and it goes from zero to one. Uh, apparently, in the last round of BMP things, uh, traditional runoff coefficients for pavement and roof areas has gone from 0.95 to 0.99, but, um, you know, that's for the most, uh, not really much going on if, if the coefficient's 0.99, that's basically all, all runoff. Your I is the rainfall intensity. <clears throat> and that's an average rainfall intensity over the entire watershed. And it's averaged over the time of concentration. And then, of course, A is just the drainage area in acres. So let's go through the units and figure out why I think it's the rational method is what it is. C is a dimensionless coefficient. I is in inches per hour area is acres. So multiply them together, you have acre inches per hour. Okay, well there's 43,560 square feet in an acre, 12 inches in a foot, and 3,600 seconds in an hour. So one acre inch per hour is equal to 1.00833 cubic feet per second. And when I developed the hydrograph method, we actually went back and put 1.008 in there because the numbers weren't working out right. So um, that's why some call this the rational method because basically the units work out that you use a multiplier of one uh, to, to get from acre inches per hour to uh, CFS. Does anybody here really want to put in 1.008 in their calculations? Put up your hand and leave the room. <laughs> okay. Now I'm going to get into that a little bit because precision, we can, we can have answers wrong to nine decimal places now with computers, but, um, you know, we're really not designing steel beams here, and if you, if you think that your calculations are more accurate than 20 or 25 percent, you're kind of fooling yourself. So. The method is rational because it's using a ratio of runoff to rainfall. The assumptions, the C value, essentially what you have to come up with is one drainage area, one uh, rainfall runoff curve, and you weight that based on the, the area that you have, but it assumes you basically have a homogeneous watershed with the uh, evenly distributed rainfall and runoff over, over the watershed, and you have one C value for the watershed. <coughs> now, I'm a concentration and storm duration. There are three possible cases that I've come up with, there may be more, but here's the first case, and this is the usual. 
And what we do is we compute the time of concentration, which is defined as the longest time that it takes the whole watershed to contribute to the point of interest, to the downstream portion of the, of the point of concern. Okay, that's the typical definition of time of concentration. And when you're looking at a watershed, you may have to pick four or five different possible paths of where that water would go to find out what's the shortest or the longest time that it takes for the water to get to the downstream end. And when that happens, when you set the storm duration equal to the time of concentration, then you, number one, you have the entire watershed contributing to peak flow. That's usually a good thing. Number two, the maximum flow then occurs when the rainfall duration is equal to the time of concentration. Okay. Case two. These hurricanes that lasted two years, or that lasted two days or three days. In my backyard, I see that rainfall over that two-day period. But typically, uh, so in this case, that storm duration would be a case where the duration of the storm is longer than the time of concentration. Say if you had a five minute time of concentration to a rain garden in my yard and we had a 24 hour storm duration. In that case, we have the storm duration longer than the TC. So Theoretically, anyway, as the time expands, we're not going to have a super intense rainfall intensity. The rainfall intensity is going to drop, and if you look at Atlas 14, if you look at a longer duration storm, the intensity falls off. So in this case, the rainfall intensity is less, but you have the total watershed still contributing to peak flow, but then you would have less peak flow than in case one. Okay, total area, less intensity, Q equals CIA, I is lower, lower peak flow. Case three, this is the only thing that I could define on the internet that really um, kind of depicts the idea of case three, but it's called a partial area contribution. And this is a real thing, it can happen, and some people fool themselves by trying to calculate a time of concentration that takes a real long time, but they neglect the fact that, that this time of this lower watershed area, which says here is zoned for light industry, if you could picture this, let's say we had, this was forested area up here in the upper area, and we had a Walmart parking lot, or giant, uh, industrial site down at the lower end. It could happen that if we just consider the time that the water takes to come off of this uh, light industrial site, neglecting the flow from the upper watershed, and that time being much shorter, that we could actually come up with a higher peak flow, even if we didn't have the full drainage area contributing. Okay, it could happen and uh, I've seen cases where it would happen. So you have to be aware of that, that just because you calculate the longest time, you still may not be calculating the largest peak flow. So does anybody have any questions about the, the time of concentration? Well, it's kind of critical to figuring out these, these flows, getting the TC right. So in summary there, peak flow can be higher than the first case. Now, these are the runoff coefficients, and I believe they're the ones that are in the uh, BMP manual. Uh, they were done by McEwen, I think, back in the 80s, or no, 2004. Uh, what's nice about this is that it gives you a, a more uh, realistic or a very fine-tuning way to come up with your runoff coefficient. 
because it takes into account your soil groups, your hydrologic soil groups, A, B, C, and D. It also takes into consideration the slope of that watershed to less than 2%, between 2 and 6, and over 6 for each A, B, C, and D soil. And um, in one version of this chart, there were actually two coefficients, one for those storms that are uh, like a 25-year storm and under, like a two-year to 25-year, and then for storms over 25-year, there's a higher runoff coefficient. Kind of makes sense. So <clears throat> the point of this slide is really that um, here we have what McEwen says is uh, one eighth acre lot size runoff coefficient for sea soils that are flat, 0.3, and one third acres, 0.25. The whole point of this really is your ability to predict the C value is if I say it's 0.25, I doubt that anybody in this room is going to say no, it's 0.8, or that it's 0.02 something like that. So my point of this slide is the, the definition of the runoff coefficient is pretty well defined and I would say there's fairly a uh, small margin for error in selecting that value. You can certainly see though as you go up into things like that are commercial and open space or I'm sorry commercial and uh, paved areas the numbers do get quite higher but you're, you're all going to be able to look at that chart and come up with numbers that are probably less than 0.05 from what anyone else might come up with. Okay. So to defend the rational formula, the variables, the runoff coefficients, as I said, are relatively well defined. And selecting them may not have a significant impact on the peak flow. For instance, if the difference between 0.3 and 0.25 is 20%, peak flow 20%, not really such a big deal. However, selecting the time of, time of concentration is pretty important and it's a lot more critical. And what this is, is a printout of NOAA Atlas 14. The values in this chart are intensities in inches per hour. Uh, I kind of cut it off to make it fit on the screen, but um, so the way this chart works is for a five minute duration storm, you go over here to 100 year and that says that it's 8.03 inches per hour. The other thing that it says that probably not many people ever noticed is that that value ranges from 7.24 to 8.75. That's the actual uh, variation of what that number could be and that's what so your that 8.03 number could really vary but for a 15 minute duration storm you're at 5.37 so you can see as the time or storm duration gets longer these intensities drop off pretty significantly and the point of that is that um, the computing the TC certainly has a greater impact on the peak flow than probably the variation in the C value. And so, for instance, in my example here, the difference between a 5 and a 15 minute intensity is 33% as opposed to maybe 20% in the C value. Okay. So, now we're going to apply the rational method as we would design a storm sewer. And what we do in this case is we set the rainfall intensity based on a particular storm duration, whatever your design uh, storm is, 10 year storm and uh, say 10 minute storm duration. You set that duration, I'm sorry, I didn't go back. You set that duration of the storm equal to the time of concentration. Remember that the rainfall intensity charts are based on storm duration, not time of concentration. You're setting that storm duration by calculating the TC. And the point of that is you can't have two different storms on the same watershed. 
you can't analyze a 10 minute storm and combine it with the, the flow from a basin that is, has a 30 minute duration. You have to pick the longest one. So you use uh, the longer one of the two. So as you move down through the watershed, through pipes or other structures, you're going to select the longest travel time to the next downstream point of interest. So it could be that you have a storm draining system that has all short times of concentration, then you get downstream to uh, the next uh, point of concern and you have a very long watershed that's draining in with a very long time. And so when you get to that point, you can modify your your storm duration for the longest travel time. Okay, hydrographs. Um, the first <coughs> one that um, I became familiar with and worked with uh, Penn State on was called the Universal Rational Hydrograph. And we used actual rainfall intensities and depths uh, initially from the PDT IDF charts, which I think are 1980-something, four maybe. So it's fairly older data. But what, excuse me, what we did was we did time of concentration steps. In this case, this would be modeling a 10-minute time of concentration or 10-minute storm. And so the calculations proceed in 10 minute increments up to 100. 10, 10 time steps total, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and so forth, up to 100. The 10 minute rainfall intensity in this area was 6.9 inches per hour. So when you take C times I times uh, this I times your area, you get 13.8 inches, or I'm sorry, CFS, for your peak flow. And if you weren't using a hydrograph method, that's exactly the peak flow that you would have come up with, 13.8. In this case, though, when you're dealing with a hydrograph, you have to decide where the peak goes. So um, after doing a lot of research and looking at a universal rational approach, the peak uh, was established at three times the TC. So you can see here, three times 10 minutes is 30 minutes replace the peak at three times the TC. We also had 10 time steps under the uh, universal rational method. Um, so the end of the storm is 10 times 10 or 100 minutes. So if it were 20 minutes, then the total fist number would be 200 minutes. It would be 10 time steps of TC. So as the time of concentration or storm duration increases, the hydrograph also increases, which is, gives a conservative uh, approach to developing the hydrograph. The peak was placed at three times the TC, primarily to mimic kind of what the SCS method does, and that puts about one-third of the volume of the hydrograph before the peak and then the remaining two-thirds after the peak. Uh, you'll see that there are also some methods that put the peak right in the middle of the, of the tent. Um, that really doesn't make too much difference when designing a detention basin, but this is gonna mimic uh, what uh, an NRCS hydrograph would look, look like. And again, the hydrograph lengthens due to the TC increments of 10 times. There's also a DeKalb hydrograph, uh, which originated from DeKalb County, Georgia. And this is a little bit different, but if you'll notice that it's 10 time steps of TC. Okay, so it's very similar to the universal rational hydrograph. Uh, however, you'll notice that the one times peak, it occurs in the middle. So in this case, they chose to create the hydrograph peaking right in the middle at the fifth ordinate. However, what they did was they just came up with these ratios 
and the ratios that you apply, if your peak, say, is 10 CFS, and your TC is less than 20 minutes, you use this column. And if your TC is over 20 minutes, you use this column. The results are identical in terms of the peak being in the middle, but these, but these ratios are a little bit different. You can see the two curves here and, and uh, the way they look. Uh, this one has, a, the shorter duration has a much uh, faster uh, ascending limb and uh, the longer one has a little bit slower ascending limb and a little bit faster descending limb. And uh, so all you simply do there is you multiply your peak flow by these Q over Q peak ratios. So in, in the case of 10 CFS, this would be 1.6 uh, and 1.9 and 2.7 and so forth. And you have a hypergraph that has a total area under the curve. Um, however, there isn't necessarily a conservation of mass with that because these, these values to me are arbitrary and they don't necessarily, the area under the curve doesn't necessarily um, come up with the same volume that a 10 TC uh, rainfall uh, rainfall volume would give you. Uh, and I'm going to show you the, uh, the volume calculation. The, uh, the one that I've seen, and I think this is in one of the commercial packages, I think Hydroflow, I believe, uses a triangular hydrograph. Um, in this case, what I've seen used is they place the peak as a triangle, they put the peak at the time of concentration, and then the total storm duration is one more TC. Sometimes I've seen it as much as a uh, total duration of three times TC with uh, the, the falling leg going out one more TC. But basically this is not a conservative volume. First of all, if we take the case of a five minute TC, this total storm duration is only 10 minutes. Probably my bathtub would survive a uh, 10 minute storm, but you know, not a not a rain garden or a, or a basin that's uh, uh, you know that I would live downstream of. So I would not use this method. I'm just pointing out that it's been used in the past, and some of the hydrograph, some of the software packages uh, use that. I wouldn't approve it though if I were the municipal engineer. I just don't think it's conservative. Back in the 80s, which really is when this, all this started with me, um, I did a lot of pen dot work, and the only method that they would accept for detention basins was the rational method. And the only rational method that really existed at that time was the so-called modified rational method. And you started basically with a triangular hydrograph. Um, You place the peak at the time of concentration. This is a trial and error process. That's what TME is. Uh, and you increase the duration um, with longer durations than the TC. And basically, what you do then is you calculate uh, what you calculate this peak based on your longer duration, which keeps falling, but the hydrograph keeps keeps moving out to the right, and then what you do is you calculate what is your required basin outflow and you run a straight line or if you want to get fancy you could use a parabolic curve to where it intercepts the uh, descending limb and this area under the curve is your required storage volume for that to work. Typically that descending limb is also one times the TC here. And so, again, we set the outflow rate equal to the point on the descending limb and just calculate the area under the curve. 
the units of that time is in is in typically in minutes, but let's say it's in seconds, makes it easier, and peak flow is in cubic feet per second. The curve that says storage volume is CFS times seconds or cubic feet. So that's how you come up with the required uh, volume uh, for your basin. You have to do this on several iterations to see which one gives you the largest peak flow. So it's not fun to do it five or six times. And then when you do an actual routing through this method, if you carry it that far, you may find that the shape of your outflow hydrograph here isn't going to be a straight line. It's going to be some sort of curve. And what will actually happen is one of those storms that you assume was the critical storm that gave you the most volume is one that's shorter duration or larger. So not a very fun way to do things, but that's the way we did it back in the early 80s. Uh, and what I had uh, come up with in my initial uh, uh, trial was to come up with some, some methods that would predict the outflow hydrograph a little more accurately. So now we turn to the Virginia Tech Penn State Herman hydrology model. And uh, it's, this version is still current, uh, version 8.2. Uh, there haven't been any major changes since 2015, and we haven't run the se seminar. I think we ran it in 2016 and not again since then, but we are trying to, if there's interest, to put on the seminar in, in August. In the new version, uh, there, there are actually two rational methods. This one, and we can still go back to the original PDT IDF curves, which are a separate uh, function in the software, but this is the new uh, rational hydrograph procedure that's there and uh, some of the nice features. First of all, you can model five different methods of the, the rational method. The newest version is modified universal rational method. Uh, we put in uh, before 2014 the PDT pub 584 method, so uh, you can use that to com compute a hydrograph. We also have a simulation that does the SES 24 hour duration for the uh, 25 times uh, TC duration. We have Yarnell's equation, which I'm really not used in practice, but some people out of state may use it. That's a specific method for a storm which is less than two hour duration. And then we have the traditional universal rational, which is just the 10 times. Uh, TC uh, methodology. So this is the project location screen when you open the software. And you'll see Pennsylvania. If you're using the uh, Pub 584 PennDOT method, you will just click on the map where you are. And it's going to look up all of these maps and charts that you have in Pub 584 and it, it's going to bring in those rainfall intensities for you. You do not need to pick a site on the thing for, for any of the other methods other than the Pub 584. And you can put in your X, Y coordinates, which are arbitrary if you have to come back uh, and you know where you were, you can click on that. Uh, you, the, the nice thing of this method is when you open the program, all of these storms are selected to analyze, one through a hundred. So you're not doing this five, six, seven times. Uh, you can do your one through hundred year storms all in one fell swoop, which makes it very nice. Or you can just do the ones that you're interested in. You can open a previous example. You can save, save the uh, hydrograph. So this is basically your first input screen. Uh, you, also, you have three tabs in this method, the input data and the output tabs are there to use. So in this case, we're going to demo the modified universal rational method. So in the project location screen, these are just blow-ups. You'll pick one of these 
uh, buttons for the storm type that you want to analyze. You'll pick the storms that you want to analyze, click them, and enter a title. And uh, the modified universal rational, that was added in July of 2014. I developed the computational procedure for that um, using several test uh, watersheds and Atlas 14 data. The next screen, which is your input data screen, you're going to input your drainage area in acres. So that could be easier. Uh, you're going to input your time of concentration for that drainage area in minutes. And it won't let you go below five minutes because there's really no data on that. So five is the minimum. The uh, NRCS method uses six minutes. So you can, you can put anything about five minutes in there that you want to. <clears throat> And then the next uh, screen, you put in your runoff factor um, for your watershed. And if you just put a value in the constancy, it'll uh, propagate all of the other ones for the same one. But if you're the kind of guy that really wants to zoom in on uh, using different runoff values for different storms, go ahead. You can, you can put a different one in for each storm if you believe that's appropriate. Now, this is the tricky part because you actually have to go into Atlas 14 and you need to recall some data there. Um, but the first part of this that you would typically be involved with is um, you go into uh, NOAA Atlas 14 and look up the rainfall intensities and the rainfall uh, depths for each design storm. And I'm going to show you how you get that in a second. But in this case, on the left-hand side, we only selected the two-year and the hundred-year. These are grayed out, so it's not looking for data there. So I input 4.67 inches per hour for the two-year storm and 9.11 for the hundred-year. And then this is really the, the hard part because at 25 times the time of concentration of five minutes, that's 2.08 hours or 125 minutes. And you have to go into Atlas 14 and interpolate what is the 2.08 hour for the two year and what is it for the 100 year. Okay. Well, we've got a nice little spreadsheet that takes care of that for you. Basically, you go into Atlas 14 on the internet, you uh, find your site where you want to go, and you download two CSV files, bring them in to open this program in Excel, hit the red button, and it imports the two files. Over here is from Atlas 14, the rainfall intensities in inches per hour, for five minutes up to 48 hours, and from one to 100 year storm. Uh, that's all I'm displaying, and that's all we input. Uh, and then over here, it inputs the total rainfall depths in inches for all of those. And they're just two separate CSV files that you get off of Atlas 14. The next thing that you do is you go down here and you click on your time of concentration. And when you put in, in this case, five minutes, it goes to this chart and does a four-way interpolation for you. And these are your rainfall intensities for five-minute TC. Um, and since there is a value for five minutes, they better be the same as these are up here. But if we put seven minutes in, we could it would do an interpolation uh, between the chart of two of the two nearest ones where it would go in between. And uh, so this is the rainfall intensity, 4.67 for the two year and 9.11 for the 100. And then over here, the total storm duration is 25 times TC. It automatically says that's 2.08 hours and it does an interpre interpolation here to give you the rainfall depth. Well, why do we need that? 
Well, first of all, we're setting the total storm duration equal to 25 times the TC. So what we want to do is the area under the curve, we want to make sure that the total area under that curve is equal to the runoff for that two-hour storm. So that's why we're doing that. We don't have all the equations in the software to pick every single point uh, off of Atlas 14. But if you wanted to do that, you'd have to do a manual calculation uh, for each time step up to 25 times TC. That would be extremely tedious. We also have an optional volume estimate in the software where we can input the desired pond outflow to estimate the storage required. And basically there, in this case I put in, I wanted a one CFS outflow uh, for my 100 year storm. And there's a computational procedure that simulates a parabolic shape outflow hydrograph uh, and computes that volume for the, um, for the required storage. So this is the output tab. And for each, each hydrograph that you ask to calculate, you're going to get a tab up here at the top. In this case, it was just a two-year and a hundred-year. And as you click on each tab, you'll see the, the results of each one. So we, if we checked all those boxes, there would be seven of them across the top here. And for each one we would select, you can see, uh, in, in this case, the peak uh, is three times the TC, or 0.25 hours. The peak was 4.56. CFS. The total area under the hydrograph is 5,832 cubic feet, and it gives it to you an acre feet as well. And this is the shape of the hydrograph that it, it made. Um, the required storage for a 1 CFS outflow would be this uh, 2,486 cubic feet. That wouldn't display if you didn't put in a value there for the, uh, the estimated volume. And in this case, if you had five or seven storms, you could check this box, save all hydrographs. You'll get a thing that says, just name it. I could name it Tom, and what it will do, it will save Tom two year, Tom five year, Tom 25, 50, and 100, and so forth. So you don't have to go through that seven times put name in one time and that's it. And then the same thing here, you can print this data, uh, you can print all your hydrographs or just print whichever one that you're on with that tab. Any questions on what it can actually do? Good. Um, now I'm going to explain in a little more detail how we calculate uh, using the modified universal rational. First of all, we put the peak, we compute the peak using the TC rainfall intensity so that that peak is going to be the same one that you would be designing your pipe for if it's coming into the basin with your TC uh, duration. That's going to compute that peak. The duration of the hull hydrograph is going to be 25 times the total rainfall uh, depth, 25 times TC. Uh, and it's going to require you to give input, as we showed from the spreadsheet from Atlas 14, or some other source if you have something better. I'm finding that many of the municipal ordinances that, that we have to deal with do specify now that you use Atlas 14 rainfall data rather than something else. Some of the ordinances still have older 24-hour uh, rainfall values, but a lot of the newer ones that I've seen do specify Atlas 14. So I thought when, when that came out in some of the ordinances, it would be really appropriate to try and get the software up to speed that we could use something uh, that's newer and better.
Again, the peak is placed at three times the time of concentration. We use 25 times the time of concentration, time steps. And we use a process for those first three ordinates using a Q over QP ratio, very similar to that decal method. The first ordinate is 0.1 times the peak, and that occurs at one times the time of concentration. Second ordinate is 0.3 times the peak at two times TC. And the third one is one times the peak at three times the TC. So every hydrograph that you come up with is going to be calculating the first three ordinates that way. Um, I had to pick something. I looked at the decal. I didn't exactly like the shape of that hydrograph so much. Uh, and I, my total goal was to make sure the area under the curve was equal to the total storm runoff that we needed. So let's use our example for a five minute TC, 25 times TC. The total storm duration there is that 2.08 hours, 125 minutes. And if the TC would be 15 minutes, it would be six and a quarter hours. And if it would be one hour, it would be 25 hours. So if you want to do a 24 hour simulation, you can take, I believe it's 57 minutes for a TC and it'll compute a hydrograph that has a total duration of 24 hours if you want, if you want to do it that way to see what happens. So the total runoff then is the runoff from the 25 times TC storm duration. So again, that area under the hydrograph, CFS times seconds is cubic feet. And then what, what I did was I adjusted the descending limb of the hydrograph, in other words, beyond the peak. Uh, and ending at the 25 times TC, so I have an end point of the hydrograph, that's at the 25 times TC. And adjusting those ordinates so that the area under the whole hydrograph equals that 25 times TC storm. That's what the original PDT-IDF methods did. That's what this new method does. Decal would not provide that kind of feature and the universal rational, I believe, would not do the same thing either. Okay. So for each rainfall intensity and total runoff depth, the two values we had to input, you're going to get a different hydrograph shape, especially on that tailing end. But, you know, you're preserving that peak inflow rate um, as you would hope that would be. Let's, let's take a look at how we would design a detention basin with infiltration to try and uh, meet the DEP uh, net two year volume increase. So the first thing we would do is compute our two year 24 hour volumes using the NRCS runoff equations. I'm sure you've all done that hundreds of thousands of times. Subtract the pre, the pre from the post, that's your volume that you need to infiltrate typically. And that's what we're going to assume that we can do. We're going to set the basin or the bed, whichever type of structure we're going to use, or the, the rain garden, the lowest outlet orifice elevation, we're going to set that at or above the infiltration volume that you get off of your stage storage curve. So in other words, we're not going to let any water out of the basin or bed or rain garden until we exceed that two-year net volume increase. Okay. Then we're going to generate hydrographs using the rational hydrograph method for the post-development conditions to that VMP for that T 
IPC duration storm. And then we're going to, going to after we have all those hydrographs generated and, and saved, we're going to use modified pulse routing for each storm, for the peak rate control, for the two through 100 year storms. We're gonna actually route that through the basin. Uh, for those of you that haven't seen uh, the VT Pusham uh, Pro Basin Designer that was added maybe five years ago, uh, the, the methodology has changed to very similar to what I showed you with the rational. Uh, basically working on one screen and you can model all of your storms at one time. You put in your outlet structure, it'll generate all the hydrographs and route all the storms for each one that you select all at one time, one project file. And uh, you can very easily go back in and change the outlet structure or stage storage or whatever uh, to zero in on your design. You don't have to keep going over and over and over again. You can make one change, it'll route all those storms at one time. And it's very powerful and it's, it's very accurate as well. Okay. Okay, so this is, this is my friend's uh, request for uh, looking how do we combine hydrographs for a downstream BMP. In the first case that we're going to talk about is we have the same time of concentration for each facility. That makes it pretty easy. So for instance, we have a five minute time of concentration leading to our detention basin. We also have a five minute time of concentration for a storm uh, leg that's going to tie in below that basin. Okay and we're going to combine those hydrographs. So first we're going to compute the hydrographs for the downstream condition uh, or the structure and basically as we would have done in the past, uh, calculate those hydrographs through, each, through that facility. And then after we're done with that, we'll compute hydrographs from the downstream condition, combine it, using the hydrograph combining modules to add the two hydrograph ordinances together and there you will have your combined outflow from the basin added to the downstream condition. Okay, this is slide 34 I believe, the one I asked you to mark up a little bit. And in this case, We've assumed that we've already designed the basin for our TC duration storm, okay? So we have the basin all designed, we meet all the release rate criteria for the downstream property and so forth. Now we come to a culvert that's coming in to the outlet of our basin and that has say a 30 minute time of concentration and our basin had a 10 minute time of concentration. So what we would do then is generate the hydrographs into the basin for the longer time of concentration, the longer storm duration, and do a routing through that basin and save those outflow hydrographs. In other words, after we've just designed the whole basin, we now have to look at what a 30 minute storm is coming into that basin because we have a 30 minute time watershed downstream of that. And we wanna know what the combined result would be. So we would do the routings through that and then we would do that combination, okay? So why don't we just combine those hydrographs, take the five minute storm from the basin and combine it with the 30 minute storm from the uh, culvert downstream. Well, as I said earlier on in the presentation, we're talking about, we're not talking about time of concentration, we're talking about storm duration. So you're analyzing a storm with a certain duration. The storm duration is not a time of concentration. You can't combine a 10 minute storm with a 30 minute storm. 
and get good results. That, that doesn't work. So that's why we're taking the longer duration through that basin to be able to uh, combine it. So you must use a consistent storm duration for e each BMP. And just as you would have sized a, a storm sewer going downstream through a watershed, you always pick the longer time of concentration. No different. In this case, we have uh, two different design storms, one for the basin outflow, and then the longer one to do the combine. Okay, does everyone understand that whole idea? It's pretty important. Okay, a quick comparison of the two methods, NRCS or TR55, which I think is defunct now, but that's what most of you are familiar with. We do have the TR55 tabular method in the VT push-up. Uh, the NRCS hydrographs are for a 24-hour storm duration, number one. The rational hydrographs are not 24 hours, typically. They're 25 times that time of concentration. So they are not equivalent. They could be if you analyze the, the total duration to be 24 hours. And, but the rainfall intensities um, that we're using now are based on real, up-to-date, NOAA Atlas 14 data, okay? And RCS values are based on that 24-hour depth uh, and a type 2 storm duration, which is very conservative. Uh, most of you are familiar with what you use for a 5-minute storm duration. Uh, if you use the uh, SCS option in the rational hydrographs, that equates to 13 inches per hour for a 6 minute TC and a 7.2 inch rainfall. And you saw my example, we used 9, so 9 versus 13. So in my, in my mind, the, uh, the peak discharges are also inaccurate because they were not developed to uh, simulate the more frequent storms and very low curve numbers. Keep in mind, SCS method initially came out for designing uh, ponds and, and flood control structures. So they were interested in these real high uh, intense storms, not a one year storm on a meadow. This is just the, this is the uh, printout from the, from the, uh, SCS option is showing that 13.05 inches per hour is what you're coming up with uh, if you use the SCS type 2. So I'm kind of anxious to see what this curve C is uh, when you compare that. So, in my opinion and in my experience, I believe that the peak discharges of then RCS are, are inaccurate and way under predict for low curve numbers and the very frequent storms. Uh, I also have found over the years that they typically overestimate by a, sometimes a very large factor, resulting in some really large outlet structures discharging into a downstream condition. And I, if I have heard it once, I've heard it a hundred times that Oh, like he's on that basin using SCS and the basin never has any water in it. That's because it can handle a 100 year storm with uh, 13 inches per hour uh, rainfall intensity. <coughs> the other thing is most storm sewer systems in a development that you're designing, you're designing using the rational method. So how do you equate that if you have a peak that's maybe twice as much going into the basin and the pipe that can deliver the flow? Okay. So it all boils down to sound engineering judgment, selecting methodology based on site conditions, factors of safety, damage to life and property. Uh, if a rain garden failed in my backyard, it might wash out a couple petunias on the way to the street. That's about it. So. Questions? Do we have time? <coughs> Um, we're actually cutting into the break now. Okay. I don't know if you would be willing to take questions if people have them, and if not, 
Sure. Uh, I'll stick around if that's one. And we do have a question and answer at the end if you're going to be here for the